Okay, we're on. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with Adrian, and today we have a special guest, Martin King. Um, Martin King is the the you run or you you founded Inspire and Share, and no, basically sorry. you're trying to what like develop the value of people in an increasingly automated future. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I suppose it's relevant to this conversation as well. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm co-founder of Inspire and Share. I've been in education and technology for 30 years. Okay. So, um, you know, helping people learn has been my my life, really. But, um, yeah, with the changes that are coming up, um, yeah, my interests now are, are, are far more into um, developing people for the coming age. I was an IT manager for the last 25 years. Okay. Um, so, I'm really going back to my roots in education and psychology, anthropology. You know, my, my, my main um, starting point was in the social sciences. So I did study psychology at the University of London uh, with anthropology. And I went on to do um, computer science and then went into education. So um, I'm, I seem to be going back to my roots now. Um, kind of had enough spinning the disks in the server room. Yeah, I'm interested in getting out really and uh, applying the tech and uh, helping tackle some of those issues that are coming in this future machine age, which maybe we'll talk about as part of this. Topic. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so, so the you know, so the people who are listening, uh, today's episode is is jumping off the last one, which had to do with uh, you know living in a world without sleep, and um, right at the end of that of that podcast. Uh, we were talking about how you know if if come the future where robots rule or where ro robots are you know on par with us, uh, will people you know opt to choose not to sleep in order to compete with them? <laughs> um, and uh, that took us into this tangent of smart drugs and whatnot. So we decided to to create a whole episode just for this. <laughs> and, uh, and Martin today is going to join us. Is joining us to you know help us you know look through it because you've uh, you I've, I mean you've written stuff you know about this this topic. You that's you actually reached out to me <laughs> for <laughs> for that or you know left you left a comment on a blog post and then we started you just riffed off from that and then we you know decided to put this together. Um, so what was um, what have you been thinking about the topic itself? Well, that that was uh, that's what I, I, that, you took me in a different direction, George. There, um, I had no intention of. Um, well, I'd been aware of this in the background for many years. You now, given my background, um, but it never come forefront. You know, until you put the 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 um, post about uh, well without sleep, and then I kind of cynically said, you know, don't steal our dreams. <laughs> that's all we've got. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, I quite like my sleep. Unlike you, again, you I, hear, I heard, listen to you having like six hours of sleep. You know, I like ten hours. You know, uh, yeah. and I find my. If, 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 I don't want to talk about productivity, but I find I'm most productive in those hours when I'm half asleep in bed and not fully focused and awake. You know, um, it's a different type of productivity. But it was yeah. it was that post that got me into there, and I did mention about the ADHD and the narcolepsy. Um, modafinil um, type uh, smart, well, drugs anyway, uh, to keep you awake. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we, we moved on into this this kind of topic. Um, I suppose, one of the, leading on from that, I suppose I could talk about, you know, the, the, the smart drugs. You know, we have this conversation in education all the time now, you know, what do we mean by intelligence? What do we mean by being smart? Because um, often in education, you know, it's defined by how well you do in a test, and education's increasingly bent around those tests. Um, and so you, there's all these conversations about teaching to the test, um, and it's excluding certain types of intelligence. And I noticed that the smart drugs um, kind of debate is all framed around productivity and what you might call cognitive uh, the execution, isn't it? Uh, yeah. 
I, I, I can't help remember reading one of those articles that um, described, you know, back in the 60s, students would take drugs to get high and expand their mind and open the doors <laughs> of perception. And nowadays, they're kind of taking drugs to become more productive and uh, to help with cognitive execution, uh, rationality, reasoning, yeah. what you might call right brain, if you, you know, I know it's controversial, but it's a good analogy, it's a good way of describing in a kind of uh, layman's way, you know, the different types of intelligence. So all those cognitive enhancing drugs seem to enhance our rational, reductionist, analytical, memory-based skills, which are those things which we learn in education and we take tests in. Yeah. But it doesn't no, I... do necessarily... No, the debate isn't about creativity anymore, imagination, mm -hmm. uh, dreams. Uh, in fact, you know, we just take the dreams away and it makes them more productive. So this is one of my concerns, is that the smart drugs are all aimed and focused, indeed is the right word, um, a particular type of being smart, which is only one particular type. It's a type of smart which is recognized today. Um, and the bit that I didn't get on with um, at, at the moment is um, I wanted to spend more time. The bit that really interests me is the philosophical kind of discussion around this and the symbolism as I was saying, like in the 60s, it was, you know, take LSD, expand your mind, open the doors of perception, uh, yeah. or and now it's take modifilin, stay up longer, work harder, focus, be more intense. Um, and how that kind of represents society today. Um, in the UK, we've, in the last four years, introduced tuition fees. Now, when I went to college, it was pretty much free and so you know you, you had I used to read English literature even though I was doing psychology I often didn't go to half the lectures but I was there to kind of expand my mind um, but today the students are consumers they're customers they're paying they're, they come out of university in the UK with four to five thousand pounds worth of debt mm -hmm. um, I hear it's even worse in the States yeah, so <laughs> they, they, they they want to maximise their, um, their 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 experience. Um, there was a there's a woman on the radio the other day. She was talking about how she calculated it cost 150 pound per hour for her lecture, so she doesn't miss lectures anymore. And so yes, it's all about productivity, cognitive function rather than imagination. And is this you know a, a sorry state of society today that we come to value our young people are valuing cognitive execution, memory, rationality, all those things. And the worst thing, of course, is those things are the, those things which the robots will take from us yeah. because they're the things which robots do better, analyzing large amounts of data, memorizing stuff, yeah. uh, rational and logic, uh, and all the human attributes of um, imagination, creativity. They seem to be ignored and even, you know, in fact, some of these drugs, it, this is something I was going to come on to later uh, in a way, but some of these drugs that we're talking about, cognitive enhancers, they seem to have sometimes a detrimental effect on those human traits of creativity and imagination. Um, and there's the other factor as well, is that we're not just brains, you see, um, we are bodies as well. And all of this, it's the same debate in education again, that uh, it's a whole body, whole person experience. Just focusing on the brain and the cognition, it doesn't really take you all the way there. You know, um, there are other approaches to try and get the motivation and the, the flow that I've heard you talking about as well. Yeah. It's the whole body experience. Um, if, if you, the, 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 the the kind of um, the hormones and things from the body that you get, you know, can can motivate you. Go out for a good run, come back, feel relaxed. That's the other thing as well. A lot of these drugs are all about focus and attention. Um, 
where sometimes you just want to defocus, associate, and be relaxed. But I have been actually misbehaving because that's the other thing on my Twitter profile is I aim to misbehave. It, in fact, it, it's quite relevant to this as well. Have you, do you know you probably do the film Serenity and the series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what they did there. You know, they gave drugs um, to the population because that will make them better. But uh, it turned them into what was it, the Reapers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, you know the the. I think there's a big assumption that um, you know because I was I was you know I'm I'm pretty much into the whole the whole brain stuff. Um, <laughs> I I, I self-taught myself neuroscience, <laughs> um, so I was like you know I need to understand how people work. So let's look at them from you know from a biological point of view. <laughs> Um, and there's a huge, a huge assumption when you talk about the smart drugs. I don't use them, but my interest in in understanding this also stems from from the fact that I I remember everything. <laughs> I have very good memory, so it bugs me when other people don't remember. Um, <laughs> it happens often, and and sometimes when it happens too often, like the bad side of forehead comes out. Because I, I'm like, God damn, I already told you or so, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like, so, so for me, I was like, okay, so I always, I've always had this in mind that if you help people, you know, with their cognitive functions, we wouldn't live in a different society. <laughs> uh, but it's not, not using the drugs, you know, simply looking in and saying, God damn, I could be better. So what do I do to, you know, to remember more stuff or to learn faster or to, you know, because we, we can all improve our cognitive functions without the use of drugs. Um, mm, but you, you raised, raised uh, an interesting point there. What, one being, I've got a terrible memory. Um, I, I've kind of, that gives, I think it gives me some, some advantages, in fact. Um, I wouldn't like to, to, to make some dreadful assumptions about people with good memories, but I've found that people with very good memories do rely on facts quite a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas, yeah, yeah, and I, I, well, I can't do that because I've got such a bad memory. But, but the, the the question kind of raised there is about what we are. You know, again, I suppose we go back to the sixties, um, which was so good I barely remember it. <laughs> but uh, you go back to the sixties, people were um, talking about adapting to their life circumstances. You know, this is. Intro, no, introspection, finding out who you are and living with it and accepting it. Whereas what we're doing today is, is well, I can improve. Why have we got to improve myself, ourselves? Why have we got to develop? Why have we got to do these things? I mean, it just seems to be a, a, a natural assumption today that, oh, I can be better, but what's wrong with the way I am? And, you know, and be happy, as I say, happy in your skin. You know, they, there's a phrase they hear sometimes, you know. Uh, and and that is a way of contentment. So in the 60s, you had, you know, the, the Buddhism, and you had kind of that that kind of meditations yeah. and uh, mindfulness. Uh, today, you know, there is a rise of mindfulness and being aware of the natural state. All there is, I suppose, it's a rise of what you might call the hacker culture, isn't it? Um, this idea we can hack ourselves, we can make it better, we can achieve our fulfillment, rather than being comfortable with what we've got. So there's, again, I think that is a symbol of our age, uh, consumerism, capitalism, um, always wanting to develop, hack it, to improve it, rather than being happy, as it were. And with that, actually, there's another side issue here, it's about happiness as well. Um, I've missed that, that, I didn't put that in my ethics for obvious reasons, it's difficult to define it. But um, anywhere in this is where the happiness, why are we doing it? You know, why do you want to um, take smart drugs? Um, what's the reason? Is, is it to achieve happiness and all this stuff? Does it, uh, you know, again, we go into the meaning of life. Um, and again, there was, I read that this afternoon, um, you sent that link over the weekend, uh, which was quite a long read, but I do remember in it that um, taking smart drugs is okay for specific focused work, but of no use if you want to talk about the meaning of life. Yeah. <laughs> and that broad associative stuff. Yeah. So um, it's... It, 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 the, 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 that's what I say. The fascinating thing for me about this is the kind of the wider philosophical issues, which 
I, I said in the kind of tweets this afternoon that I've uh, formed in my mind yet. They're kind of just emerging and yeah. bubbling up. But, but I, I find it so interesting that, you know, this about smart drugs hacking ourselves, it's all about this modern culture or, which comes from, you know, the, the, the tech startup, the hacking community type of thing, you know. Um, and if you want to be really, really, um, I suppose, uh, cynical, you know, there, there's a way to monetize it as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ultimately, that, that, that's, that's quite worrying. Uh, and I'd imagine, you can imagine maybe the tobacco industry, <laughs> you know, as people smoke less, they might be looking for the next addiction or something like that. Or, or yeah. can you imagine? They, they just brings us up into other territories, doesn't it? But at yeah. the moment, those drugs haven't had major catastrophic addiction or harm issues. There's some, there's some people, you know, that have taken them. I know, I know Adrian uses or has used modafinil, um, but uh, I mean, he's, uh, you're not addicted to it, right? I mean, you just what like use it every 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 often or not like uh, like uh, a routine. It it depends. Um, I try not to use it every day. It's <laughs> the thing is with that drug, it's not addictive. They haven't found out that if it's addictive or not, but it's not addictive, and um. It's it's they say it's like Adderall but way better because it doesn't give have all the bad side effects of Adderall. I never taken Adderall. I've never taken anything else that's not Molafini. And uh, it, isn't it? Speed um, Adderall is uh, as amphetamine, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, a very old-fashioned drug. Yeah. I know that a lot of people uh, when they're in school, in university, they take it so they can. Uh, like study. Uh, a friend of mine told me, I, I've taken Adderall, I've taken everything. And when he took Molafinil, uh, he he told me, you know what, I don't feel anything. He was expecting some sort of a high, like he gets with other drugs. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I told him, it's, it's not going to get you high at all. It's just going to, you're not going to fall asleep. And um, it's going to make you more positive, which is why I, I primarily take it because it, it makes you positive and it, it gives you the attitude that, oh, I, I need to do this, I'm going to do it. Let's do it right now. Why wait, wait, let's do it. Let's, let's do what we need to do to, to get where we want to be. So that's why I mainly take it. What, why do you not want to take it every day? Because it's a little bit expensive. That's like <laughs> one thing. <laughs> and... Um, Sometimes I, I think, even though online research says it doesn't, but sometimes I, I think that if I take it every day, it does lower the, the impact it has on me, or that's kind of what I feel. So I, I take it a few days, and then not take it another few days, and when I start taking it again, the first day I do feel like a, um increased uh, positivity and productivity, but the thing that I haven't felt, and it's I think it's why a lot of people mainly take it, is uh, I can't get myself to do stuff I don't want to do. I, I, if, for example, I need to translate my film in Spanish. Even though I paid money, I still don't want to do it, and I still uh, procrastinate. I, I mean, <laughs> it's not working that way for me. But there's a higher chance like if I get in a in a good mood and I'm like, you know what, fuck this shit. I need to do that. I'm gonna do it, and I do it. I'll start doing, it. and I I'll get more done than if I hadn't taken it. Because the two times I tried to translate the film, I did like 20 seconds, and then I was like, I'm done with this, and then another 20 seconds some other day, and then I was done with this. But the other day I did like five minutes, and I was I was taking laffy news. <laughs> the other time I wasn't. So, I mean, that's my experience with it. And also, the thing is, if, because I, I, I took it for like a month straight, and I was having uh, 7 a.m. to midnight or 1 a.m. days every day. And eventually, about three weeks or four weeks into it, 
my body was out. It was out. It, it, my brain was okay. It was. It wanted to keep working, but my body was like, you know what? You need to rest. And I felt that like the second week, I felt that my body was very tired. My back ached, and but my brain was like, no, that's no problem. Just shake it off. Keep working. But at, uh, at about four week, I I just got sick. Like my body was like, you're gonna get sick for three days. You're gonna rest. You're not gonna do anything. And I was just sick. I was in bed. I couldn't move. I was. It happened two times. That's another thing why I don't take it because it it, it makes you go longer than you need to or you have to. That's really interesting because uh, I, I was talking about whole body. You know, we are body and mind, and yeah. you. We, we, we're not disembodied brains, you know, so you do need a body to support the mind and eventually, in this case, the, the body was given out but the mind, you know, was that the, the uh, that was a f spirit, the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the flesh became weak. Of course, the opposite can happen as well. You can take, uh, I think, uh, like with amphetamines, uh, I think uh, the opposite can happen. The body keeps going but the brain kind of just switches off. Um, you can, so, um, Lo and behold, if you get a kind of drug that affects both the body and the brain, uh, and it just goes out until maybe they both they both give out. Um, I, I was going to ask you, um, had you experimented with dosage? Um, you know, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, um, I got it off of uh, the the um, the recommendation about the the drug. I got it off a website, a blog. And the guy, the guy's about six four, two hundred something pounds, and he was like, "I take half of a two hundred milligram pill." <laughs> so I'm like six four, and also like two hundred pounds, and I and I said, "Well, I'm just gonna take half of it." And especially if I take half of it, it lasts more, so it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. But um, I did take uh, full pills, one, because the guy wants you. He sent a, a few pills to a friend of his, and the guy just received them and took like two or three, and called him up like two days later, three days later, and he was like, dude, I haven't slept in three days. What the fuck did you give me? So I haven't taken more than one, and I mean, it does last way longer. It, it's, it, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like 7 a.m. to like 6 a.m., and then you're tired. So it's, uh, yeah. No, I've not heard any. I haven't read anything about um, overdosing and things like that. I was just wondering. There's that film Lucy. I, I'm not sure if I, I. I can't remember seeing it. I've, I've read about it a few times though, where she is a drug mule. Uh, do you know the film Lucy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. that one and Limitless. Yes, because Limit and Lucy, isn't it? She, the, the 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 package breaks in her stomach when she's kicked in the stomach, and she gets the full dose. Uh, and she gets telekinesis. And I just wondered if anybody experimented, <laughs> <laughs> experimented over the top. Uh, what on earth happens if you take an awful big dose? I don't know. But from the literature and from the things people say, and everything, everybody seems to be quite uh, quite competent in in, in taking it, uh, self-administering uh, the, the the this this drug. Um, it's quite remarkable. Although maybe it's not. Um, I don't know why that is. You know, you do get um, maybe it's because it's self-defeating, like you say. If you take too much of it, it doesn't work so well. Um, so there's no point. Um, I suppose if you've got a kind of linear effect, where you, the more you took, the better it was. You might get people overdosing, but uh, I suppose That's, if it becomes kind of shape. I think it's. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't use them. Never have never even coffee. Like I don't drink coffee. I can't. It has no effect on me, um, or even like uh, like al some type, even some types of alcohol, like like Red Bulls and whatnot. You know, supposedly they should you know, you know boost you. They they put me to sleep. Like I I don't go to, I go to sleep with the Red Bulls. <laughs> I just, I, yeah yeah, it doesn't have no effect on me. So it's it's kind of strange. But uh, I think you know I think like if you look at you know the, just the term drug. Um, you know, are, are these things going to ruin us? Well, <laughs> I think if, if we take them as, as is and not use them like, um, I mean, I have no issues with people using them for, you know, to enhance their cognitive function. The problem is if you only want to stay there, like you were saying, because we know these things do not, I mean, they make you focus. They don't make you, 
you know, look, you know, white, give you a wide angle on things, and you know, uh, to have a wide angle on things, that's when you start creating. And but uh, these things are more, you know, to 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 help you focus. I mean, and and a lot of people, we know a lot of people need that thing. I I'm, think I'm it's, it's whoever takes them, because in my case, I, I think I'm a very creative person, and what it does to me, it like. Uh, organizes my mind. I mean, right now it's a mess. I have a lot of things on my mind, and if I take it, I can be more creative. I can be more focused on being creative, and I can uh, think more about if I have to do, like, let's say, a music video, I can think more about the whole music video instead of just, like, snippets I would like to create. So maybe it's the type of person who takes it. Yeah. I... Um one of the issues for me is, is is openness in all of this as well. That um, I we don't know how prevalent it is in society, but um, if in in work or college there are some people taking this, they're not saying anything about it. They're achieving an advantage if it does give you an advantage over others. You know, I think that's where the issue is. Um, it's quite surprising if you talk to somebody and you realise, oh, I didn't realise you'd taken um, the, the, this, this <laughs> drug. Does that explain the, the, the difference? Um, and then there's the normative effects of that, that in you know, coercion. So if you want to work in this industry, you've got to take the drug because otherwise you can't keep up. You know, if you're, if you're in a, a company, they're all taking the pills. They're yeah. all working at this intense rate. You know, I, I was just uh, thinking when the when the comments to your piece on sleep, I mentioned about a dystopian, well, I won't say novel story. I might drop next week, but I've got, I've got a blog post I'm going to call Smart School, <laughs> where uh, you know the, the you've got the the CEO becomes the um, chemical enhancement officer, and. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? And the e-learning manager, you know, it, it becomes the enhanced learning manager uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and the kids are all, you know, have to take pills. But that's a quick way to achieve the, the results in the inspections and the grades that they want. Um, and whether you'll get a company, I can imagine a company in, in the future saying, right, we're a smart company, we take <laughs> Bills at the at reception, you know, can, can you? It'll be quite. Neat, but to compete, this is my worry. You know that, um, you know, it becomes normalised. If you don't partake, yeah. you, know, you 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 are disadvantaged, and you get a class of people that are constantly popping the pills to stay ahead. Um, and whether a ruinous, George, you know, with the robots coming, that. We just don't stand a chance on this side of things. Um, those, as I say at the beginning, those factors which cognitive enhancement um, improve uh, are those very things that the robots are far better. At, you know, the, a machine has got a computer's got far better memory; it can process a lot more data, yeah. uh, and they're getting better and better. Are we competing on the wrong? So, uh, in a sense, you know, this is this is marching. Eyes wide shut into the apocalypse, you know, popping pills. <laughs> As it were, can you imagine you know, a scene in a film? You know, eyes wide shut, popping pills, marching off to the end of a cliff. Yeah. Now, see, see the, the other thing is like, you know, for example, is that people look at these things kind of like if they were steroids. Um, with steroids, you you manipulate your body, and you know, with these things, you're not really creating muscles for your brain. You're just yeah, I mean, it's just like you know, it shuts off other things and help. Like like Adrian was saying, shut shuts off other things, you know, distractions, and helps you just focus on whatever you're doing. Um, whereas people, I think, are believing that these things are like creating new muscles for them. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and you know, and you know that you know when how the brain works is that if you start repeating the same thing, the you know you start creating new neurons that just focus on that, so it becomes efficient. But when we're creating we need to we start creating new neurons because we start creating new connections and that's when we really start creating new muscles <laughs> per se because <laughs> the brain doesn't yeah. have a mus the muscle the brain doesn't have a muscle but you know you know you get what i mean <laughs> i do i do uh, you there was that thing it was about optimization wasn't it um there it is limited we're just optimizing but 
exactly as you say, there is only limited capacity, uh, and it is all to do with focus. We think anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, so imagine, imagine if, um, like you were saying, there's a, you know, they start, they start, you know, there's suddenly this company made of, uh, I mean, just, just a scenario. Uh, in Silicon Valley, then this company has, you know, they, they start, you know, adopting drugs or these drugs for people where they don't ban them. I mean, how does that look? <laughs> yeah. How the hell does that look? <laughs> because imagine if, if that thing gets funded and then it becomes like a unicorn, then everybody's going to start jumping on board with that because, you know, they're going to say, oh, so these guys are taking drugs. That might be a reason why they are, you know, AKA successful or whatever, and then you know you know you know because that's how the world works most of the time. It's just you know just you know example, and then somebody else starts adopting it. They don't they are mindless as to why they are even doing it. Um, and that's that's kind of like where my my tension comes from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, the this smart drugs is only one type of enhancement, isn't there? There's others coming, yeah. aren't there? There's implants. I mean, at the moment, you know, we've we've gone. Well, the other, the other, the other thing I was thinking of as well is the continuum. Um, it's like, like also there's that perception, isn't there, that uh, things happen until a point, and then you become aware of them, and there's a threshold that things cross. On the one hand, there's the drugs, there's the natural drugs, like ca caffeine. You know, uh, well, it's processed, but you know, it's widely available. It's more addictive than many of these, I suppose. Um, yes. There's a, there's a. Um like the the most that I've ever understood that I've you know used some of these components because um, and and you sent me this link you you actually posted this on your blog post where you know an eBay link and it's like all these things that they sell there's a there's a drug called Lula Lulu something I forget its name but it's uh it's basically it's like it's a brain enhancer and one of the one of the you know chemicals that it has or you know components that it has is called guana. And I remember when I was younger, I used to work a graveyard shift. So I used to work at night. So anytime I, you know, arrived to the to the job, I would always buy myself a Sobe drink, which had guarana in it. Now the reason I bought the thing was because I thought it looked cool and it tasted really damn good. You know, n later on that I re that I start, you know, understanding what the components had had. So it had a little bit of caffeine, but it had the guarana. And uh, and then the tyrene, which if you go inside and, and and Google it, you will see that those things what they do is they help you focus <laughs> and they enhance your your alertness. So I was like I was I always thought I never I never like I, I'm trying what I'm trying to say is at that point I was not um, you know I wasn't I wasn't saying oh I'm gonna drink this because it makes me feel more alert. I just felt it <laughs> and I and well, I liked it. <laughs> but, yeah, you but, you you. You've got me thinking there, actually, because, okay, you, you mentioned that, but the origins of Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, of course, you know, yeah. with, with, with cocaine in it. Um, Red Bull, you know, hasn't got cocaine in it, has it? But, uh, yeah. you know, you've got people, like you were saying, you know, holding a can of Red Bull, the advertising, etc. Can you imagine if, um, and there's no reason why they wouldn't, couldn't, I suppose, um, find some natural derivative... Um, that had a brain enhancing effect, put it into a product, um, market it as cool, it has this effect. You, you can imagine that happening. Um, of course, like modafinil, you, you, it's not illegal to buy it, is it? You mustn't sell it. Um, but uh, some other products that you that were naturally derived. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's... there's, there's, there's I mean, they're in nature because these things you can. I mean, you can get them off the cocoa of, of like where coffee comes from, yeah. and and so they're natural. They're not, uh, you know, they're not created in the lab or something. So and they're in drinks. Um, but um, <laughs> but that I mean, it's, it's it's very interesting because those those drugs, Lulu something. I'll I'll, uh, I'll look it up. But it it's it's rated the the best smart drug by even the lab people because. They looked at it and say, okay, so this thing has natural stuff that's already in the in the environment. It's not something we created, and it has the bigger effect as opposed to like uh, the the what was, what was the other name of this one that had huge marketing budgets, uh, Brain something, Alpha Brain from uh, Onnit, and uh, they are using more of a marketing angle 
to, to promote this as opposed when you look at the science behind it it's really it's like it's like cheap it's like cheap drugs <laughs> it's like cheap coke um, <laughs> it's not it's, it's not these like uh, you know <laughs> really really sweet coke I mean not that I've done coke but <laughs> or, but <laughs> But <laughs> but you know what I mean. I mean, <laughs> there's ways to this whole thing. But but yeah, see, there's there's a marketing angle to these things, and you can see them yeah, even if you go online and, and put the hashtag smart drugs or you know nootropics or whatever, you will see these people or these companies you know retweeting these stuff or putting stuff on Instagram with uh, you know certain celebrity using it, and then you know you know how it works. <laughs> That's that's right. Yeah, I also wonder about politicians as well. I'm sure politicians uh, that well, that's never discussed, is it? But uh, no, you know, especially uh, in the caucuses you've got going around there at the moment, they're <coughs> they're on the road. They they've got long days. They've got a they've got a debate. Yeah, let's pop some stuff. Look smart in front of the others and things like that. Yeah. Um, in the UK here, we've we've there, there there's been an issue about legal highs. You know, there's some th uh, I can't remember the Oh, I can't remember the leaves that they sell in um, some areas of London, but um, they've decided to turn it round now. That um, I think the, the drugs are illegal unless they're proven otherwise, um, because you were able to go and buy these. So, the, but the point I was trying to make is that it's seen as being wrong if the drug makes you happy, <laughs> but it's been quite okay if it enhances your mind. You know, um, well, they're, they're both these, they're both if, if you if you um like if you if you put if you take the word happy and productive and kind of like you know put you know you know dis disintegrate it um I think yeah. there's a there's a method to the madness because as you know the a big point here is motivation so am I motivated to like Adrian was saying he's not motivated to finish those tasks but if I need to drug myself to get motivated to do something, that we're already wrong there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why I was mentioning flow. I'm, I'm a big I'm a big believer in flow. I like to put myself in flow anytime I, I can. <laughs> um, I've I've understood how to make it happen on on command for myself, um, and I think that's like a good state to be in because it makes you happy because you're doing something that's you know challenging or or you know, trying to figure something out or whatever. You know, the task, the task, the task goes to the background. You're not even thinking about the task. You're yeah. just going. You're just going through the motions. And I think I don't know if if I would use a drug to to, to you know whilst I'm in in, in freaking flow mode <laughs> um, to do something. I don't know why why I would do that because you know these. I mean, have you read that book, uh, The Age of Superman? No, I've I haven't read it, uh, but um, I've heard. You talk about it, and yeah. uh, I read some things about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so he's not talking about, and you can go online and look at his talks and the slides. He'll put the seventeen components of 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 these, you know, internal drugs that we have in our bodies that we can activate on command to put ourselves in a productive state and in a happy state. Actually, not even not even a sad state. It's a productive state because it's like it's like drugging ourselves out of our our own, you know, chemicals. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we go full circle here because I was talking at the beginning about mindfulness yeah. and about being aware of ourselves rather than adapt it through external. You no, know, there's always something we think wrong about the quick fix. You know, pop a pill and it's, you know, it always seems wrong in a sense and some somebody working hard for something. But but what you're saying there, George, is is about being aware of our inner being, our inner self, and being able to bring the best out of it naturally. Um, it's not so convenient and quick as popping a pill, but you can do it. You could almost do it any time. If if um, you haven't got the pill, you know, well, you can't um, achieve that state. But hopefully, you know, if you learn about yourself, yeah. then you can achieve it you know, through meditation, mindfulness, yeah. or the. There was so I'm, I'm hopefully going to write a um, write a blog post in the next couple of weeks about. Organizational flow, because um, that's interest me as well. Uh, and what what sparked that off was uh, a guy talking on the radio, um, not about management at all. He was on something like Desert Island Disc we have in the UK here, um, but he was talking about the role of management in removing the barriers and facilitating things to be easy. And that's a lot of the thing. What 
some of the smart drugs apparently you know do is to help you focus by eliminating some of the distractions and that's part of where you talk about the flow state you know you get into it and the other things don't distract you and interfere with what you're doing and you remove yeah. instead of enhancing you're removing you know, I, think, the I think I think I think because um, you know we haven't or I haven't you know done you know to the research I did to to you know to have this this episode I did not see a or even talking to people to see a notice of pattern where they're saying oh, I was in a state of flow they don't even say that because um, <laughs> When you when you talk about flow, okay, what what the hell is flow? Yes, you are focused, but you're also engaged. You're you're like, God damn, I want I want more of that. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. not it's not it's not even like being on drug. It's like I don't know. It's like a a state of um, I don't know, a state of happiness, something like that. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's very hard to describe. It's kind of like being in love. I think like you're in 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 you know like you can fly. You feel like you can fly. Do whatever. There's no limits. But um, you know when I when I use when you use drugs, I think you don't get that, <laughs> or the or the smart drug, you don't get that feeling. You just you're just um, you know an automatic if you want to say that. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Yeah, the disembodied mind. Um, I suppose you could you could talk about this um, natural natural drugs if you like. Um, yeah. I can't remember what's called. But um, if you if go running for example, you come back. You feel uh, is it adrenal? No, it's a, I can't remember which which gland it is. But um, you come back, you feel relaxed, for example, because you've exercised. Um, now you can take drugs to achieve the same effect, but um, it 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 I think something about that being more natural. Um, of course, you know, it's easier to take. You know, I suppose I digress. I suppose I'm I'm actually kind of um, arguing against myself there, actually. But you can't always go off for a run, but if if you're able to um, kind of spark those 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 whole body experiences naturally, um, you can do it throughout the rest of your life. Um, There's a um, you know when you um, I mean if you if you um, talk about like how to how to get the most out of yourself or people, uh, I think there's a there's a huge like uh, disconnect between. What it is to like in an in organizational level, uh, what it is to I mean, there's this there's huge myth that productivity means doing the same task over and over again, right? But but when we're talking about innovation, like <laughs> like it's been going on for decades and decades, right? Like people have not figured out that innovation is not repeating the same task over and over again. It's actually diverging, figuring something out. It's hard. It's messy. It has no Linear way to go about it, um, and 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 they want to you know they want to create a systematic way to achieving it when we all know that it's like a, it's kind of like being on drugs, <laughs> but in a natural state because you want to figure something out. There's a challenging thing to it, and that's when you achieve flow, when you you know this natural state of flow of the body, not the you know with with an enhancer in there, and uh, I think that's that's a problem because I've always talked to people and say, listen, I want to put. Your employees in a state of flow. I, I, I mean, I don't want to, you know, use some enhancers like creative enhancers. No, 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 no. I just want them to achieve their natural state of flow because when I get them to that, they will become addicted to that feeling because they've never had it in here. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think you could say sustainability, isn't it? Um, that, that, yeah. With, 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 and I think I suppose you could always come around and say like the smartest drug is the the inherent one. You know, it's the that which is which is within us, yeah. uh, and it's sustainable. Um, okay. I think it, I think it's also the you know the you like the instant gratification, like the, you were saying, you're popping a pill is instant gratification. It's kind of like a placebo effect. Oh shit! Like if I pop this pill, you start believing that it's giving you extra powers, right? <laughs> um, and that's that's a that's a huge that's a huge problem <laughs> if if we get to that point. Um, whereas yeah, you've, Whereas working that towards the natural state of flow actually takes work because you have to be challenged, you have to be engaged. And as Adrian was saying, he there's certain things he has a project he wants to he don't he's not motivated to do them. He knows he has to do them, so it's very hard for him to get into that natural state. <laughs> you know what what I do in my case because it's, it's like for me it happens in different scenarios. I I start thinking about things in sort of like a game. 
um, like like a yeah, it's like a video game. So I, I apply those things to certain challenges where I'm thinking, okay, so what happens if you know role playing with with Sam's situation? I'll define like the enemy. This is the enemy, <laughs> and if I hit that or, or achieve this, right? It uh, you know it'll open this door towards something else, right? So I mean, it's like playing mind tricks on yourself, but um, that's how you achieve you know stuff you don't want to do. <laughs> this um, is you know, yeah, well, you say there, there's a couple, couple things popped into my mind there. One, one is about, I don't think, I hadn't thought about that until you mentioned it. Um, the symbolism of, again, I'm interested in the symbolism of, of, of this uh, smart drives cognitive enhancement for society. The instant gratification, that is one of the, one of the symbols of this age at the moment. It's, it's, and it's, and um, I was reading just um, a couple of hours ago, um, I can't remember what it was, or which I, should, I would do if I took a cognitive enhancer, I suppose. I can't remember what it was. But uh, uh, about a new Google um, search engine, um, I tweeted it, in fact. Um, there's a tweet of the line that says um, something along the lines of the internet and our brains are merging. It's all to do with the, in, the, um, the intention web, um, that, that our, our, our attention span, our in need for instant gratification is getting smaller and smaller. And yeah, just pop up. But we don't learn that way. If we if we do like you were saying, you have a video game. We learn something about ourselves. Again, yeah. that's, you know, we're not learning about ourselves, our inner our inner being. We're yeah. just looking for instant gratification, the quick fix. Um, it's all kind of superficial. Yeah. Um, I I think there's a like there's this this. this I mean, in, in, in just just uh, looking at human nature is is you you know that people are are afraid to look to them to within themselves <laughs> and to question their you know inner being. So they're just using what they see around them as a excuse to do things because that's the way things are, right? Whereas when you look inside, um, you come to your own conclusions and your own motivations, and you're not reacting to you know whatever the new the new the new color of the day is, or the same, or what cool it is they drinking? I want to drink that, right? Or what drug are they using? I want to use that too. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's a colleague of mine uses a phrase quite often called solutionism, oh. and you see it everywhere. Um, you go to a conference or in education. Five ways to do this, or achieve this in ten steps. You know, <laughs> really just wants this quick. Fix, rather than as I had a little dialogue, it was on Twitter as well. <coughs> with some educationists in the UK, I said, "Education should could educate could the education system help people learn by themselves? Because there's a problem in education about dependency. You know, it's yeah. it's going to have the, the the product, the content to deliver and test upon. You know, and then somebody also said, which was quite valid as well, about think for themselves as well. Um, it's all about the solutionism. You just yeah. want, again, quick. Oh, I've got this to do. I'll take the pill. Um, <laughs> I won't learn. It's kind of like it's it's, it's kind of like math. Two plus two gives me four. Oh, I don't know that. I know that. So I'll take the two and the two and put them together, and then we're done, right? <laughs> but if you want to create a new equation, it's like what? You don't want to do that work because it's hard. But that's that's what what takes you to a different tangent. To a different understanding, yeah. to to a transformation in yourself, um, instead of just uh, going through the motions. <laughs> yeah, there is. That's right, guys. There is a there is a difference between. Um, you know, there's a there's a um, you were are you you were mentioning education. So I I I will I would like to talk to you about a project that I came up with, um, a few uh, you know like last year, uh, you know separately, but I will mention it here. Because uh, it has to do with the, it has to do with a topic that's not smart drug based, but it has to do with developing people, and it's, it has to do with getting into a natural state of flow. And the way the way I think uh, we're we're teaching people to supposedly survive in the world is through diplomas. Um, whereas when you teach them the fundamentals of you know observation, talking to people, collaborating people, leading people. Um, asking questions, you know, creating stuff, you know, coming up with ideas, um, you know, those things get get thrown to the background. That's what you do when you're a kid. You're asking questions all the time. You're immersing yourself. You're in a natural state of flow, and people forget that, you know, as as the years go by, right? So so what I what I came up with is what I call the trilab, which is failure school. 
So, so let's let's teach people to to accept you know being wrong as a as a as a way to to finding you know the truth within themselves as opposed to oh my 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 professor says that I should uh, you know say this or think that <laughs> okay that's fine but uh, you know what do you think <laughs> um, I, I, I I really like that idea I, one thing that concerns me is the the filter bubble because you find like-minded people tend to get together yeah and together, yeah. Uh, obviously like-minded people here yeah exactly that I've um, I, I, I'll, I'll tweet it out a, a link to you I, I wrote it a couple of weeks ago about um, speak like a child education speak like a child asking questions exactly what you were talking about but failure as well the importance of failure. there was a guy at a conference I went to a couple of years ago it was from IBM and Cliff, uh, Kayleen Hargreaves and um, he talked about, and this is big in education again, um, you never need to fail. Um, one, management don't like it because it ruins their statistics, etc. So the, 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 the machine, the adaptive learning algorithms, will always provide you with the right level or, and right questions and right content for your ability so that you progress on this nice linear path to your full potential. And everybody was speechless because it's full of educationists. Um, and they were speechless, and they mentioned exactly that question. You know, failure is an important part of learning. Um, or in fact, probably the most important part. You know, and if people are never failing in in, in, in their, um, it sounds great. Now management love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> fits in with their models, but teachers don't like it and like you say failure school is a great idea I like that I'm gonna I'm gonna riff on that I think <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'll, we can talk we can talk about that you know on the different on the different uh, call but um, but yeah I mean it's it's very simple because it's you know when you're when you're learning and you're really immersed you're in this natural state of flow there's no drugs involved there's there's just the biological stuff that we have within us that's doing all that work we're being activated and there's nothing you know, outside of it, that's interfering with it, and you know, that's that's how you learn. I mean, it's going through obstacles, <laughs> and yeah. you know, these the smart drugs I think are a are a excuse to not have to go through that, <laughs> to not have to, you know, to say, God damn, I don't want to, you know, focus on that, or, or I don't want to, you know, I just want to become like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think, I think they're, they're, I think that's that's probably, probably get, well. Yeah, I probably have to go soon. But I think that's a that's a good um, good kind of ending statement there. I don't want to be like a robot. Will it ruin us? You know, because or you could say you know that old phrase. Um, was it Kev, Kevin Kelly? I can't remember. But um, we shape our technology, and then our technology shapes us. Yeah, Kevin Kelly. And ultimately, you know, you we've got. The, Unfortunately, the potential here for the, 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 the bioengineering, the pharmaceuticals, to shape our beings and things like that, but the robots are actually to eventually replace us. But, yeah, to ruin us, um, you know, been, education is, as I come back full circle again, education is kind of prepping us for replacement by robots. The replacement, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. Things, it's, you know, teaching to the test, all the skills, and these smart drugs to actually change us. Um, replaced by robots. I mean, it's, it's, it, maybe there's a big con conspiracy theory going on here, or something like that. I don't, it seems particularly, but they are really <laughs> challenging times ahead. And uh, one of these, you know, the, the, this issue here with cognitive enhancement is, is one of those big questions. <laughs> one of those big questions. Yeah, that's true. You better, you better shoot off, um, Josh. But uh, I will never do this again. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's I, might, I might, I might ask you to to do a return favor or something because uh, I've I've done some uh, hangouts that I've recorded called free education. Okay. In yeah. all its connotations, um, I might call you back sometime in the near future to talk about failure school. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll share my information with you. <laughs> yeah, let's just talk, talk freely. Um, it, it is about you know, new ideas about education and stuff like that. I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll tweet out a link to you after this. Sure. Uh, okay, All cool. Right. That, All right, Martin. Uh, well, thanks for joining us, and um, you know, let's do this again. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, it's a pleasure to meet you.
Cheers. It was great having you on board. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. -bye.